Alla i regas vil gæt for at tære sig rugby gold og schachten scha. En dårre kvæffe og en idiot ochtu kuig og tagen ryb i tærten scha. Når Franka og en sikkert kollegi og mor landstøn. Kan ikke revision vi må ikke hæs na halbene i chli og morifield ochtig kuigtig. Vi dine råger og an i den øget fadagen går hård i den fasse her. Sjæ dimmer den fasse her sin her bare fad og morifield. En is niet een aru voor de bits na tasse he. A farier geer bi aru waan le dina en as na gul. Wan gort tu kusje ge vrinden mullen agas vi rori moroni is dina oot. Bohr landstone na franke maar gort jodi agas kunje soel ad chrunjes kikala Michael Kiernan. Changed from their last victory over Scotland and the Australian referee, his first major international, Kerry Fitzgerald, from Australia, from Brisbane, in fact, facing an Irish side which is in confident mood. Capacity House here, Bill Beaumont alongside me, and uh, well, optimism certainly here at Lansdowne Road, Bill. Yeah, that's correct, Nigel. That there's certainly uh, an air of excitement around, and I think that comes from Ireland's great victory against the Scots. Uh, a month ago and uh, it should be a fascinating game with both sides pledged to run the ball so uh, I'm certainly uh, looking forward to the next 80 minutes and I think we all know that the opening minutes are absolutely vital here will France regain their confidence can Ireland upset them from the start so France in the white jerseys and the ball runs dead Hugo McNeil lets it run into the crowd there's the Irish lineup. Just the one late change with Rory Moroni returning in place of the injured Brendan Mullin. Otherwise, sticking with the successful team at Moneyfield. So the dropout by Paul Dean. What a, an outstanding game he had in that uh, opening championship international. Through goes Kieran Fitzgerald. Listen to the crowd already. Back goes Lescobora. Oh, that's good work. Well, certainly it's the captain's example there with Kieran Fitzgerald that uh, I didn't believe he was that quick, but he was supporting them extremely well there. And it just shows the French are a little bit vulnerable early in the game. And that'll give the Irish team a lot of encouragement with the captain leading by a great example. Yes, I sense the, the French were very uptight for this match. They know it's all or nothing today. Already their Grand Slam aspirations gone. Palmed down by Laurent Rodriguez. Ireland in in a fearsome style and almost the players applauding themselves there with the put into the scrummage given to Ireland so it's Michael Bradley the first set piece Ireland hoping to uh, be secure on their own put in and bidding once again to play uh, an ambitious expansive game as promised by uh, coach McDoyle 
just inside the French 22. And they've held that one safe and sound. Bradley to Dean, straight through to Michael Keenan. That's Ringland in the line, tackled by Sella. But a penalty. France offside. And what an opening this could be if Michael Keenan can get Ireland their first points. Well, Ireland will be highly delighted with the, the first scrum there because the French certainly are a lot heavier and it was one area that Ireland were a little bit worried about, but they'll be delighted to have picked up the penalty there for, for offside, but it was a, a great morale-boosting first scrum for the Irish side. Well, an important kick this is for Michael Kiernan, who, of course, has taken over from the illustrious feats of Ollie Campbell, Tony Ward as Ireland's principal goal kicker. Three out of six was his tally against Scotland, but uh, he was... In good form against Australia when he kicked three penalties and he did get two conversions in the penalty as well as a drop goal against Scotland. 27 points in all he scored for his country and this would be a marvellous start for Ireland in the third minute of this first half. That just adds to the tension as the, the ball rolls over. 24-year-old Michael Keenan from Lansdowne. So will it be Ireland getting the first points on the board? Michael Kiernan. The Lord tells it all. Thumbs up from Kieran Fitzgerald to his kicker. And our Ireland on their way. Well, they've done everything right in these first few minutes, Bill. Yes, well, the French are always very vulnerable early on in the game and what you've got to do is get in amongst them and Kieran Fitzgerald did that from the uh, 22 and really uh, you've got to admire the spirit about the Irish team but we've only played four minutes so there's a lot of rugby left in this game so back to the uh, starting point Lescobora this time in play McNeil that's a big kick well if they didn't come out inspired then Certainly their opening uh, efforts would have lifted them. A bit of argy-bargy at the front of the line-out with Lenehan and Condon. Quickly taken the penalty by uh, Gallion. Gallion again. By Cordonu to Blanco. This is a step. The Narbonne Express. What a sidestep. What a try. A stunning riposte from the French, as I think only the French could manage. And the short penalty here, notice Dintras, he drives the ball in, and it's Cordon you who makes the try by moving out to the left there, and it's a clear overlap with Blanco. But Estev, he cuts inside here, the cover, and I think the Irish defenders were expecting him to go for the corner flag, but he cut inside, and he beats the cover there. A magnificent try. If you remember that this guy's confidence was probably at the lowest ebb, ever of his career having missed a couple of easy chances against England and Scotland but that's just what he would have wanted oh that was magic Patrick Estev his 10th try for France and certainly uh, the confidence restored and the conversion points added by Jean-Patrick Lescabora and France take the lead within a minute of having surrendered it to the Irish and it was a gem of a try well it really was superbly built up and sheer pace from the Narbonne Express Patrick Estev so he can put that uh, spectre of the dropped pass over England's goal line behind him now he's made amends with that If we've played six minutes of play, the other 74 of half are excited. It's going to be a real cracker, this game. <laughs> it's quite uh, thrilling. Bear in mind, of course, Ireland have only beaten France once since 1975. And that was two years ago in this match at Lansdowne Road. This is Kiernan looking for support. Now it's Ringland with the pass from Bradley. 
Gallion waits, but uh, it was Anderson through first. But one or two Irishmen, I think, are judged offside, and Gallion is the injured player. Yeah, I think he was actually injured Gallion there when he was waiting for the high ball, that Anderson had his eye on the ball, and as he was steaming in, he caught Gallion there. But the referee was quite right to give a penalty because uh, there was no way that the, the guy was actually stopped when he was taking the catch. Gallion happily back on his feet. And Lescabora for touch. Straight into our commentary box. Bill Bermond ducks. And the ball returns to the pitch. And the television monitor's intact as well. He obviously found the weak link of this commentary team sort of kicking it towards me, Nigel, and not yourself. No, you missed me, Bill. <laughs> anyway, the line out just inside the French half. Taken in well by Brian Spillan. And that's pretty uncompromising from Jimmy McCoy, but in a sense, it was the frustration brought about by the French coming round offside, and uh, Kerry Fitzgerald sends France back to face. And... It looks as though Kiernan's going to try one from long range. We're about five metres inside the French half. Well, we've played eight minutes and it's been uh, brilliant action so far. <coughs> So a chance for uh, Michael Kiernan to level the scores. Bang on target with his opening penalty. And bear in mind that there is quite a wind behind Ireland in this first half, so that uh, could well put it within range. Gusting behind Michael Kiernan as he runs up. Struck it well, maybe just right it is. You can see how readily he found the length but it was just off to the right. Into the wind from Las Cabora. Hugo McNeil on the Irish 10 metre line. Oh, that's the Gallio in the Irish crowd. Love here at Lansdowne Road. Gallio in trouble. The green jerseys of Ireland pour through inside the 22 midfield. Bradley waits. France kill it, but Ireland win the scrummage put in. And there's a bit of an old fire and fury bill back, isn't there? I was just going to say the same thing there, Nigel, that we're expecting Ireland to run the ball, but that was the traditional Irish tactic, get the ball up in the air and everybody chasing it and putting your opponents under pressure, of which Hugo McNeil did very well then. So they have the put in. Bradley, straight back to Dean, tries the drop goal. Just pushed it right. Well, it seemed exactly the right idea, I must say, for the quick three points that would have put Ireland on terms, but slightly off target. Lescabora with the dropout. Brian Spillan, what a catch. The Bohemian, Bradley to Dean, changes the tactic. Looked to be taken out late by Lescabora and was. As Dean put the kick through, Lescabora came in obstructed him badly and concedes the penalty and that's about 32 meters out head on to the post for Michael Kiernan to have another go Well, no problems with the distance for Michael Keenan, as we've already seen. Slightly around the corner, and once again, the ball moves off its uh, little divot.
just builds the tension for the crowd and for Kiernan. And a chance now to put Ireland level after 12 minutes. Good enough. And well deserved. Six points all. And two penalties by Michael Kiernan. The 24-year-old from the Lansdowne Club. Capacity has here as Lescaburo restarts. McNeil. Very safe as yet, but uh, not with that clearance kick. It says Blanco sort of opportunity he loves carried it a bit too far McNeil again but still not finding the touch Gallion this time eludes McNeil good round tries to find the support of Rodriguez 10 meters outside Ireland 22 good ball for Gallion Lescabora cross comes McNeil it's a long way to travel an awkward bounce over the Irish line, and Spillan is there. Bra Brian Spillan did extremely well there, and I think he's got injured in uh, in retrieving that kick by Lescabura, but he was doing what a good number eight should do, covering, because Lescabura quite wisely realised that Hugo McNeil had been caught in the rug, and that Ireland was out of full back in position, and he quite wisely put up the, the high kick there. And the worry, I think, is uh, that... Uh, on the follow through there, some boots landed in the, uh, I think boots may have landed in the mouth of Brian Spillan. Certainly there looked to be no uh, deliberate intent, but it looks like a very nasty facial injury. Dr. Mick Malloy there, the Irish team doctor, is quickly across to check on the damage. Oh, and this is cruel luck for Ireland and for Brian Spillan. Well, thank goodness for mouth guards. But uh, it may well, you can see that bottom lip is badly split. That's a cruel, cruel blow. Well, that, uh, to put it mildly, is unfortunate for a lad playing just his second international. An impressive debut against Scotland a month ago and doing great covering work there to save any possibility of a try and now escorted from the field. Let's hope it can be uh, rectified, but it's like a, a very nasty split of the lower lip. So there with 14 now, Ireland on the drop out. That was good work by Donald Lenehan. To Bradley, to Paul Dean. No panic under real pressure there from Paul Dean, the man who's slotted in so well in his newfound role of fly half, having played so much of his rugby as centre. France called the two man line. Once again, using Gallion for this match as the thrower in. Dan Tra is the man to come round the back and try and make the uh, advance over the game line, but it's good spoiling work by. Kieran Fitzgerald there. There's another Irishman injured. And it's actually uh, Philip Matthews, another back row man, holding his shoulder as France come again through Joanel to Gallion. And the commitment is total from both sides. And the last collision involving Jimmy McCoy and Francis Agé. Uh, Matthews happily is back on his feet just... Uh, holding his shoulder a bit and the attention is for Ajay. Yes, the last thing that Ireland would like is for Philip Matthews to go off because it looks as though Brian Spillan, if he's not going to, he will have to be replaced by Brian McCall who's a second row or number eight and they, they don't have another back row replacement so that uh, they'll be anxious to uh, make sure that Philip Matthews is fit and can, able to continue. Yes, a worrying time still for Ireland. Spillan, of course, 
off the field for attention. Brian McCall, perhaps in sight of his first cap, the London Irishman. Kieran Fitzgerald, who's uh, set the example in this match. Ireland's 10 metre line. And as I speak, I notice uh, Brian McCall is on the touchline waiting to come on as replacement to win his first cap. The 25 year old from London Irish. And a special cheer for him. Though he would have wished it, I'm sure, to be at the expense of Brian Spillan in that unfortunate way. So, number 18 there. Brian McCall. So he'll be able to slot in to the number eight position. Hugo McNeil finding a good touch that time. Takes play up to France's 22. Actually, I noticed quickly looking at the line out that. Uh, the Irish should move Willie Anderson back to number eight, a position that he's played for Ulster, because I think McCall is more of a second row than, uh, than a number eight. Yes, that's obviously the, uh, the way they're going to work it. Willie Anderson, in fact, having played most of his rugby as a number eight forward for Dungannon and for Ulster over six seasons. In the meantime, France have the kick to touch through Lescabora. Once again, the uh, siege gun boot, as it's called, by this 23-year-old, uh, 24, in fact, in uh, about 10 days' time, from Dax, Jean-Patrick Lescabora. Ireland's throw, halfway line. Anderson now then, one from the tail. And uh, McCall, the middle jumper, but it was Joanel. Gallion to Lescabora. Sella. Still on his feet, finds support again from Grato. And that's Swanel again, lovely linking, Cordonieu. And Astaire put in touch by uh, Ringland, a bit of a dust-up between McCoy and by Astaire. And in fact, Winston Jones, the touch judge, just having a very quick word with Kerry Fitzgerald, the Australian referee. And for the physical confrontation there France have been penalised Danton having very severe words with Patrick Estev and another hold up and this time looks I think to be Paul Dean Paul Dean has got a bit of a crack there on the nose. It was on the covering tackle that he did on uh, on Seller, the French centre, when he, he th broke through the middle. And uh, certainly there's a lot of blood around this afternoon that uh, I'm glad I'm not the squeamish sort anyway. But but the referee was quite r right in coming back to the incident with Patrick Estev in penalising because Jim McCoy was a peacemaker trying to break up the, the argument between Trevor England and Esteb, and uh, the referee was quite right to penalise the French there. So it's McNeil to relieve the pressure by kicking to touch. And actually the, sp the spin on the kick has uh, brought it back into play. Blanco errs. Bit over casual on the clearance kick. And Lenehan takes advantage. Set up to Bradley. Good service to Dean. Through for Moroni. McNeil in the line. Referee uh, playing any possible advantage. None comes. And there's certainly no love lost out there. Full-blooded in every sense of the word. And once again, the touch judge has called the referee's attention. Derek Bevan this time, calling across Kerry Fitzgerald. And we'll wait and see what the uh, end result is. And that may concern Salah. The crowd uh, on that far side clearly had seen what happened as he came in with the tackle. Dantra comes across to get clarification.
And Dantra is beginning to fume, I think, with his players, the way they're giving away good possession and opportunities for Ireland to kick a goal. It's never worth it, Bill, is it? No, you're far better just getting on and playing the ball because the French are a little bit vulnerable when they all start arguing with themselves. And I used to think it's a great thing when you played against them and they all started moaning to each other because you felt that you really had them rattled then. And that's what Ireland have done to them this afternoon. So six points apiece and a chance for Michael Kiernan to get a hat trick of penalties and at the same time put Ireland ahead. Senegal. <laughs> 23 minutes played. Ireland in front once more. saw what happened last time Ireland went ahead France came back with uh, a spectacular try within minutes of the restart Paul Dean who was uh, not involved in the championship at all last year for Ireland. Oh, that's a delicate touch. Nigel Cardo colliding with his own man. And Salah on the break. Esther, the pass was a bit too far behind him and it's high. Well, it nearly happened again. It did that. You can't afford to give this guy a yard. But the worrying thing from Ireland's point of view is that Philip Matthews looks as though he's really struggling with that shoulder injury that he. He collided there with his teammate, uh, Nigel Carr, and it looks as though he's in a, in a lot of trouble. And it's the last thing that, as I mentioned earlier, that Ireland will want because they've used the only back row come second row replacement in Brian McCall. Yes, they have Harry Harbison and uh, Mick Fitzpatrick standing by. And I must say, from the moment he first went down and uh, gripped his shoulder, it looked like, uh, well, one so often sees the uh, chromioclavicular injury to the shoulder and uh, the Irish team Dr Mick Malloy there former member of the powerhouse of Ireland scrum in some vintage years is the man in attendance Philip Matthews 25 year old just two days older than the man already uh, off the field Brian Spillan and of course the first ever cap from the Ards Club And happily for the time being, he's fit to continue on this near side of the scrummage. Philip Matthews, Anderson locking it at number eight, Nigel Carr. This new back row combination then. Inside Ireland's 22. And uh, getting a very difficult heel on their own ball. The pick up by Anderson. Lenehan now to Bradley under pressure, but he has a fan touch and there's time for Blanco. Off he goes. McNeil under pressure, not clearing again. Seller. Stopped in his tracks by Keith Cross and back to Bradley. Keelan. And that's caused Blanco to run a good 60 yards cross field. Inside is 22, charged down by Ringland. Estev's there. And they're hounding and harrying well. Good follow-up work. Full march to Trevor Ringland there because it looked as though Serge Blanco had plenty of time there to get, get the ball away. But really, you've got to admire the Irish for getting stuck into uh, them. But here we see an injury still to uh, young, young Philip Matthews, that left shoulder. I think he's going to have to come off the field because it's the third time now the player's been stopped. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a grim situation for him. He knows the score. He knows that there's a prop and a hooker on the bench and the other three uh, backs. And he desperately wants to stay on. I, I can imagine the conversation here with his captain, Kieran Fitzgerald. 
Well, it's, it's a brave man. But uh, one has to question, is it the right decision? If he cannot use that left arm, maybe even a prop or a hooker, or perhaps the scrum half even to go into the back row would be a better decision, who knows? For the time being then, Matthews stays on. Ireland attack. Just, at, uh, just about 10 metres out, Lenehan, supported by Anderson. He just cannot use his arm. That was Matthews there, and it's all over, I'm sure. He tried to pick that ball up as he went through, but maybe he's just uh, hanging in while the, the weight comes on in this scrummage. But it's even that uh, wrong side that he's having to push with, that left shoulder. Escobora standing deep. We saw the referee there playing good advantage, but I believe it was... Uh bit of trouble course at the scrum there that uh, one or two players took exception I think Kieran and Fitzgerald looks as though he certainly got uh, caught there in the face following that scrum and uh, certainly uh, the Irish forwards took exception of what went on there yes I, I must say I was following the ball Fitzgerald is holding his face and there's a bit of skullduggery going on an indication there I think uh, I think it looked as though it had been a bit of eye guarding yes, or did. something like that in, in the scrum. Yeah. Remember that Garraway was sent off for eye guarding this game last I, year. against Ireland last year. Just outside the 22 then. Bit of an undercurrent running through this game. Lenehan. Bradley away. Deep. Dummy scissors in the centre. But Neil in the line to cross him. The challenge of Laurent Pardo. And a knock on. Brings back the scrummage yes a buzz in the crowd and uh, there's a bit of ill feeling out there I'm sure of that yes on uh, Galloway's uh, debut in the championship January the 21st of last year he was sent off for a bit of uh, gouging since when he claims to be a reformed character Ireland this time cut their line out to three. McCall, the front jumper, Lenehan in the middle, Willie Anderson at the back. Lenehan. But see how Ajay poured through the line. Comes in turn though to Dean. Down off a Frenchman. And again, aggravation. And fisticuffs and the touch judge Derek Bevan has his flag raised. And I sense it may be France to be penalised again. Yeah, I think France are going to be penalised and it wouldn't surprise me if the referee actually sent somebody off in this game. That we played half an hour, there's been at least three warnings to the French team and they're certainly taking the law into their own, own hands and it's uh, Rodriguez who's getting uh, spoken to by the referee. So, a last warning, is it, to be Laurent Rodriguez, 19 times capped. Look at the uh, words. Well, look at them. I, I wonder what he actually said. Philippe Dantral there, the French captain. I think in actual fact, if the referee, Kerry Fitzgerald, wasn't doing his first international, then somebody could have gone already that... Uh, you've got to remember that this guy is under enormous pressure. He's come over from Australia. It's the first game... That he, that he has refereed first international match and so it's a decision that he won't want to take lightly dismissing somebody from the field there's no easy situation the 36 year old from Brisbane first refereeing experience in the northern hemisphere at all and as Bill said his only previous international experience very limited and no, none at international board level New Zealand versus Fiji was his uh, biggest honour so far so as you'll see it's Kiernan from inside Ireland's half. The wind behind him. Can he make it again? Ireland leading 9-6. Will it carry? It's a good effort. It's under the crossbar. Nine minutes, eight minutes now, plus injury time of this eventful first half to go. Lenehan, superb. 
dominant figure against Scotland in the opening championship international and on song again. This is Bradley slotting in well and uh, testing Blanco. Calls for and gets the mark. Serge Blanco, whose uh, brilliant touches secured France's victory against Scotland. And he'll wait for his kick because Francis Aje is in the wars again. Francis Aje there, oldest player on the field at uh, 35. He must be pretty old, Nigel, because I remember playing against him on a couple of occasions, so that, that does date him. Well, he's wearing well like you, Bill. I wonder if he strikes a seven iron as well, too. Blanco. I think we're all expecting the Irish pack to be the ones under the pressure and the backs moving the ball, but you've got to give the pack 10 out of 10 for taking the game to the French and getting them rattled. And the backs haven't got, haven't had the space that they had against Scotland simply because the French backs are so quick and are closing them down. France win that one off the line out straight through to Coronu, missing out on Escobora, not deliberately, I think. That's Salah. Well, the uh, brilliant midfield partnership of Salah and Coronu. But not working so well that time. There's Lescabora from Dax. Ireland with the three man line meant to find uh, Nigel Carr who rebounded in the tackle as though he'd run into a brick wall <laughs> so the scrummage about 12 meters outside France's 22 Bradley, difficult ball for him, and uh, Gallion quick to snap it up. Gallion again, Lescabora drifting right, Cordonu takes the man out in the tackle, which was pretty firm from Keith Crossan. Gallion once more, did well to steal possession then with Dantra. Dips the shoulder to send it up, and Ireland are offside. Bit overzealous there by uh, Nigel Carr. Yes, he was well offside there. I think he was expecting Gallion to take the ball out of the ruck immediately, which could well have put him in an onside position. But as the ball stayed in the ruck, he, he was well offside. And this is well within Lescabora's kicking range because he certainly slotted the, uh, the conversion from Esteb's try uh, pretty easily. So we're five minutes from half time, and this gives. France the chance to level it at nine points all again. Escobora, who last season kicked a record 54 points in the championship. One step, thud. No wasted effort. And nine points all it is. Escobora hoists his personal tally in internationals to 139, and that's his 22nd successful penalty goal but the restart will wait and as a maybe one of those dead legs which uh, I know help to a line out jumper certainly you get a bang on the thigh muscle and the French doctor Penet is taking him off for attention now Francis Agé yeah, I think France are quite fortunate that uh, in their replacements that they've got also who played in the second row with uh, Condom last year so they, they have a combination there to rely on so it's France a man down as Kiernan restarts nine points all the score four minutes plus injury time at this half to go Les Kabura living dangerously and cleverly finding touch the mercurial Keith Crossan
Ireland throw in. McCoy, Lenehan, Orr, McCall, Anderson, Nigel Carr. They've dropped uh, Philip Matthews out of the line out to give him some protection and less exposure to physical contact there. And a further injury now, and another Frenchman. Uh, D'Hospital, I think, who's uh, got a crack on, on the left ankle there. It uh, must have been uh, a pretty uh, fair crack because it's not, not often that you see him going down. That, uh, it looks though like he's actually twisted it from, from that line out. Yes, he's a resi really resilient customer who's been in the French squad for 11 seasons now. Famous not just as a, a rugby player, incidentally, but a fine Basque singer who has made many records and is a very popular figure in the southwest. Pierre d'Hospital from Bayonne. And sure enough, Age is about to be replaced by Jean Charles Orso to win his ninth cap. Man who's played virtually all his matches as a second row forward, so a straight swap. Although we did see him as number eight against Scotland at the end of last season and uh, it did not appear then to be his best position, so it's just as well that he can slot straight into the second row for France in place of Age. So two number 18s then on the field as replacements. And we're about two minutes plus injury time from the end of this first half. And the score's still nine points all. Fitzgerald's throw. Well down from Lenehan, and this is Dean again. Kiernan straight through to Moroni, but good tackling from Codonu causes the breakdown on the halfway line. Ireland can thank Trevor England there because of the loose ball and he certainly threw himself at it and stopped the French from winning because if they'd won it then, that Ireland were in big trouble. Ringland, sort of regardless for his own safety, dives straight in at the forward to the French feet. Brave play. In a very physical confrontation. Cordonieu, Esther. Good effort from Ringland again, supported by Moroni. And not releasing in the tackle brings a penalty. So Bradley waits. Will hope to uh, widen the angle, perhaps. No, leaves it for McNeil. The up and under. Travelling down the touchline. The bounce beats them all. Philor's there. McCall's there. Just outside the French 22. And difficult to just uh, pluck Pierre d'Hospital out of the way and Jean-Pierre Garraway as well who managed to kill it effectively but Ireland have the put in 40 minutes up in this first half so injury time being played Phil Orr there on the loose head 46th consecutive international He'll kill me for saying it, but a, a, a remnant, if you like, of the, the Dad's Army era. This is Ringland on the short pass from Bradley. And, that, and Matthews just couldn't hold it. Doing as uh, Instinct told him to take the supporting pass inside. It came to him sweetly enough, but he just could not hold on. Galliol. Let's go Burra deep. What's a massive kick into the wind. Again, Ireland up for the three man. Brian McCall, who's slotted in well. This is his debut. Lenehan, the, his 16th international. France spoiling well. Over the top go France. Ireland have the penalty and a further chance perhaps here for Kiernan to restore the lead to Ireland as we come up to the interval. There was no ne real need actually for the French to go over the ball there because they'd won it in the ruck and I think they were just 
got carried away with their own enthusiasm. It would have been far better to have stayed on the feet and just driven over the ball, leaving it for scrum half Gallion. So three penalties out of five attempts by Michael Kiernan. The green and gold stockings of the Australian referee. And the traditional leather ball used for championship rugby matches amongst the four home unions. So Kiernan now with the chance to give Ireland a three-point lead once more. Three minutes of injury time gone. It's a worker. Yes. Well, splendid effort by Michael Kiernan. Never travelled high, but kept low, and the wind obviously gave it that extra bit of length. And it just tucked over in the junction point of the crossbar and the upright to give Ireland the lead then. Almost four minutes of injury time played. 12 points to nine. And a good reward for their unstinting effort. We start by Lescobora. Coy and McCall challenging. Through goes Garraway. And France again get offside again the up and under from McNeil crossfield this time back goes Sela tricky bounce Lescobora though it's kinder for him Lescobora who Really followed the footsteps and the powerful kicking style of Jean-Pierre Romain. Romain, now one of the French selection panel, along with such other stalwarts as Cholet, Bertrand, Gruera. They're quite a formidable team. Back from Dospital. Escobar again. Slice that one. Knock on and the scrummage in 15. Five minutes of injury time played. <laughs> Just got out in time, did referee Fitzgerald. Up from uh, Joanel. Now Les Cabura. McNeil. Recovered. Well, was he tripped deliberately? The referee says play on. It was Graton who came through on McNeil. And now it's Ireland that are penalised. Quickly taken by Gallion to Dantra. Sets it up. Swingly back for Gallion again. Lescobura at pace. Good tackling by Crossan. Again, the Irish spirit. But again, the French attack. Cordonieu, Blanco, Esther versus McNeil. He got it. Well, the commitment has been there from the kickoff, Bill, by Ireland. Straight from the kicker, but there it was a marvellous example of cover by the Irish defence because at first it looked as though Esteve had outflanked them with the, uh, the long pass and superb quick pass from Serge Blanco. But really, 10 out of 10 to the Irish backs because there was not only McNeil there, but there was Maroney and Kiernan as well covering across. There was no way that Esteve was going to sneak through the defence for his second try. Yet another hold-up, this time the uh, front row union, Jean-Pierre Garraway from Lord, the Force Tanqui, his nickname, which is uh, very generous, I'm tempted to say it's something of a euphemism, for this uh, mighty potato and grain merchant. Lenehan taps down, and that's no joy for Michael Bradley, saw what happened to Laidlaw in Paris. Gallion, Lescabora, Cordonieu, there's a loop, what a gem! 
Escobora. Again, no tight covering in crisis by Ireland. 15 metres out. It's well played by Bradley. Crossing now. But all for naught. A knock on and another injured man. Brian McCall, it is himself a replacement. Well, talk about cut and thrust. Quite a torrid uh, first 47 minutes. It did indeed that uh, I think Ireland will want the referee to blow the half time whistle here because. They certainly look in a pretty vulnerable position because you've got to remember also that Philip Matthews with his bad shoulder is a virtual passenger and uh, he's been struggling to make any sort of real contribution into the uh, last half an hour of the game simply because that his, his shoulder is so bad but you've got to admire him for his guts. And I think McCall there has got a, a boot in the back that when he went down on that loose ball that he bref very bravely won the ball for Ireland and I think he's got for his pains he's got a, a boot certainly uh, in the small of his back. But at this scrum, I think Ireland are going to have to put a bit of pressure on because with the injured wing forward, that they look very vulnerable to a back row move. And I would think Juanel and Galeon will have a back row move up their sleeves here from this vulnerable position. Perfect chance for it. Watch for Galeon, watch for Juanel. Well, they've left it for Valescabora. Drop off the left foot. And he's hooked it. Well, it looked like number 12 drop goal in international rugby was on its way then from Lescobora, but snatched at it a bit, hooked it, and it stays then. Ireland still ahead, 12-9. Nine minutes of injury time played. Heading for some sort of a record. Restart by Paul Dean. McCall fit and in the thick of the fray again and the referee I think will be quite glad to see the end of that first half too torrid action total commitment from both sides and Ireland with uh, tremendous guts carrying a man as a half fit passenger there in Philip Matthews but holding out and with the success of Michael Kiernan staying ahead 12 points to 9 and denying France on so many occasions so 14 men for Ireland as we start this second half Neil off the field well, that was a nice bit of footwork from Jérôme Gallion and a superb clearance to follow this uh, confident scrum half McNeil's back on the field example for what happened next in question of sport for you there Bill. I might get my first one right in the series with that one Nigel. So back to a full complement line out Ireland throw through come the front row though of Dantra d'Hospital to set it up for Gallion. Lescaborda. And McNeil tested straight away on his own line loose ball in goes Cordon New with the tackle seller though puts it down only to be called back. Cordon New took the man out and is penalised. And McNeil, very unhappy under that high ball, and I suppose a very good tactic there by the French. If he had been somewhat unsettled by uh, injury and the rush back onto the field. Drop goal attempt by Blanco. This is Crossan. And flanking Raton. And what a clearance. Yes, three or four times we've seen Hugo McNeil miss kicks to touch and uh, they're vital that you've got to get these kicks in because if you don't then you put yourself back under pressure time and time again and that's what McNeil has done to Ireland. Two man line for France. Scrappy ball and difficult problems for Matthews and that I think will be his last play of the game. He's down injured again. Kicked through by Dean. Gathered by Pardo. Kicked by Lescabora. 
cuts straight down the throat of McNeil. Inside is 22. But Matthews soldiers on. Carrying limp his left arm. Calling the shots from the back of the line-out. Philip Matthews. And he is in real agony, but he's on his feet. Gallio knocks on. Ireland put into the scrum. And you'll see, of course, that Matthews has moved across to the left flank, I think permanently, to ensure that he can at least push with his uh, undamaged shoulder. Bradley away to Dean. It's a teasing little kick, but Blanco kept it in. McNeil looks for the option to run. That's a dangerous cross kick. It's gone to Sella. There's loads of support. That's Rodriguez. Lescabora. Livid with himself for that. He knew he had got the pace of Pardo outside and only one man to beat. But what a miskick and what a danger McNeil's crossfield ball created. Words with both front rows from referee Fitzgerald. What a tough initiation for him as an international referee. But staying on top, this is Michael Bradley, Paul Dean. That's well placed. Or is it going to travel too far? That's the line, just cross and racing up like a bullet, but Serge Blanco relieved, no doubt, to see it just cross the goal line for the dropout. Ireland 12, France 9. There's the Lansdowne Road roar. change the whole complexion of the game within six meters of the French goal line Willie Anderson did well but it's channeled back to Gallion you notice the difference there that Jerome Gallion his first objective was to get the ball into touch. He wasn't bothered about the distance that he got. He just wanted to get the ball off the park. Jerome Gallion. This is 24th international. And to think that he missed 21 international games when he fell out of favour. So he'll be heading for somewhere around the 50 mark. Good work by Lenehan again. This is McCoy. <laughs> really lengthened his stride like a good chaser. No, it's Gallion, though. Oh, what a sensational kick. Well, an element of luck as the ball went end over end and uh, didn't kick one way or t'other, but rolled into touch about 15 metres from the Irish goal line. Kieran Fitzgerald, St Mary's, and Ireland's captain. This is McCoy from Dungannon. And they've gone over offside again, France, and that will bring much needed relief for Ireland. Michael Kiernan, nephew of two famous internationals, Tom Kiernan and Mick Lane in a great rugby playing family. It's a 
Fillor. And I sense that Phil Orr may be in the wars a bit, standing out of the, from the lineouts as France win possession. Lescabura pumps one up to Tess McNeil right on his goal line. In fact, it's uh, safe enough for McNeil to do that. Just those couple of metres too strong from Lescabura. McNeil being tested to the limit. 24-year-old Paul Dean of St. Mary's. Gave Joanel too much time to set it up. That perfect wedge. Slipped back to Galliol. Dantran looming on the 22. Galliol again. Away. Lescabura. Salah. There's the loop. Dummit. Blanco. Overplaying it a bit. Too complicated. But Galliol again. McCall calls. And uh, a man offside, I think. Decision, yes. From the cross kick. And relief for Ireland again. There is another classic example by the French in overcomplicating things. They've done this against England, they did it against Scotland a fortnight ago. We see them doing it against Ireland. They'd be far better there. They had an overlap, they had a 5 to 3 overlap. And they're so good at doing the simple things by making the ball available. Why they don't stick to this, I just don't know. Absolutely, Bill. The brilliance of Cordonu, Cellar and Blanco and uh, just, uh, well, running around in ever-decreasing circles. It's still a ferocious contest up front. The two hookers slow to get up, Fitzgerald and Danton. And quite brutal at times. France knowing, of course, that it's all or nothing today. A draw and a victory in a season when they'd expected or at least hoped for a Grand Slam challenge. But that's too easy for Blanco. The room to set up the counter-attack, but uh, again, solid defence. Moroni that time. But you can ill afford to give France free possession and counter-attack opportunities like that. Well, uh, Willie Anderson involved with a private uh, battle there with Rodriguez and the ball's some way upfield. Well, that doesn't always matter to second row forwards. No, we normally better without the ball. I so could have a great game without the ball on the referee normally. <laughs> <laughs> so a brief lull in an unrelenting battle. For well, that really is what it's become. Bradley. Clever ball. Ringland chases. Nubbly tap inside. Car in support. Now it's Matthews. Just a couple of metres out. In drive the Irish Green. A punch up develops on the far side. Such is the tension of the match. Individual duels. And the game, one sensed, was uh, in danger of degenerating into this kind of all out conflagration. Tragic to witness. And inexcusable. But, uh, Bill, it, it's been, well, building up to this, hasn't it? It's been one of those physical games, and it's inevitable that it will flare up. We saw a couple of incidents in the first half, and I noticed there that the referee detention was brought, actually, to uh, the Irish players on this occasion, that uh, it looks as though Ireland are going to be penalised, that uh, touch judge Bevan uh, drew the referee's attention across there, and I think it's a penalty against Ireland on this occasion. Coolidge says uh, Commandant Fitzgerald, who's used to uh, disciplining troops in his role as an Irish Army officer. The boos of the Irish crowd on that far side as Lescabora pumps it down the touchline. And now, 
Well, it's all or nothing, I suppose. 12-9, Ireland grittily stay in front. Down from Anderson. Fillar on the peel, supported by Lenehan. Good switch by Bradley. This is Dean. Taken out by Grattle. Quite right, referee Fitzgerald. Stupid play there by Grattle. There was no need for it. The ball had been kicked, and he just came through with a late tackle. And the referee, quite rightly, has awarded the penalty where the ball was going to go into touch, not where the incident took place. So Grattle has conceded uh, a penalty in a far easier kicking position than what it would have been earlier. So are France once more losing their cool. Major problem for Philippe Dantrat to keep their tempers under control to ensure all their efforts go into playing a game of rugby and not dealing with your opposite number and for Michael Kinn and this could give Ireland a six-point lead and it has so with 13 minutes gone of a torrid second half six points clear go Ireland in their bid to make it two out of two in the 1985 championship after a whitewash last season what a comeback this could be and the guy who's led them really has been the captain Kieran Fitzgerald if ever a man is led by example that he's answered all his critics from the Lions tour with another outstanding gutsy display this afternoon certainly has France restart and Lenehan offside by uh, Ireland that time and I was about to say Bill the effort of Lenehan has been supreme too has it not yes I think that he had an outstanding game against Scotland a month ago and his efforts this afternoon have been incredible that he's probably along with Bob North of Wales the most outstanding line-out jumper in the Five Nations Championship at the moment, but as well as his line-out jumping, his general support play has been good. And the impressive thing about Ireland is that any 50-50 balls, especially in the air, that they snap them up, that both Willie Anderson, Lenehan, and the replacement, Brian McCall, have got very good hands at picking up these bobbling balls. But in the meantime, Ireland's offence gives Lescobur a chance to bring France within three points. Scuffed it. So that's how it stays. And Ireland survive. Dean restarts. Jean Charles also. Fly hack through from Willie Anderson. Finds Lescobura. Corda knew his danger. Blanco. A stair. But not past Ringland inside to Sella though. Now Corda knew again. Tremendous support play by the threes. In they go. Out it comes. Lescobura. Sella. Blanco in the line, gets the little chip through for Esther to chase, but good work by Michael Keenan. And McNeil and Esther this time exchanging friendly glances and words. Well, Esther can be quite a stroppy little fella. Yes, and I noticed uh, on, on the wing there, Lauren Pardo is... Uh remonstrating with Serge Blanco there saying why didn't you let the ball come in the hand it would have been far better there sort of letting the ball do the work rather than the boot because there we saw classic French play going from left and then back to right and built up again now from the line out Gallior Lescabura is the loop dummied once more Sella 
in by Claude Anu from Pardo's pass. Brilliant. It's the pace of it. And it is a good line-out ball. And really, the Irish defence are at sixth and seventh there because they're expecting the loop round to Lescobora. But look, Seller takes it on his own and then feeds the ball superbly out to uh, Pardo, who flicks it to Cordonio. Superb example there of backing the runner up on his shoulder. That when the ball was made available, the runner's coming through at pace. And Lescobora is enabled to, to have the easy conversion. And puts its level again at 15 all. So with 23 minutes to go, magical touches again with Cordonu's third international try. And that uh, instinctive brilliance, which France, I think, have failed to capitalize on so often. This time they did. It was all played off the cuff, superbly passed by Pardo, who looped round Lescabura, and then uh, Cordonu rounding it off. So, it's all up for grabs, 15 all, and about a quarter of the match remaining. Frenetic pace, and uh, pace certainly the key element of that slick French handling that for once broke through the solid Irish defence. Ireland's put in. Bradley on the French 10-meter line against the head by uh, Dantran. Lescabura may have wasted that. McNeil with all the time in the world. But he's dropped it short. You cannot risk or afford to do that. Pardo. Bit laboured on the pass and uh, set up. Not getting it through to Cordonu and it's uh, Dean coming through. Well, talk about taking risks. So nearly a brilliant French attack, so nearly an Ireland breakaway. And Pardo laboured on his service and put the French back division under impossible pressure from the moment he let it go. Escobora. There have been a few missed touches today. McNeil now. Meant to pump it up higher and uh, less far. Blanco turns tail and uh, would like to have run it. Ops for touch and finds it. They'll come back for the throw in at the correct line of touch. indeed no longer an army captain but uh, the rank of commandant Fitzgerald with the throw Lenehan the tap down difficult ball for Bradley did well but immediately Dean under pressure from Graton ah, the throw by Dean landed on Graton's ear but the referee had already blown for a penalty to Ireland so we're into the last quarter of the match Kiernan, who's looked uh, pretty cool throughout, plants it in touch just short of France's 10-meter line. So there's Jérôme Gallion, the dentist from Toulon, player of the year in France last year, and now uh, principal thrower in, which hasn't been much in uh, France's favor as then, as Condor took it about a yard offside, or yard on in his favor. Actually, it was... Uh nearer to uh, Dintran standing, standing in the scrum half position there than it was to the, uh, the, the line-out jumpers. End result, scrummage in 15. If they can get them off the deck. France putting problems for Ireland on the wheel, but this is a good break by Bradley. The tap tackle was from Joanel. This is Pardo again, trying to keep it in play. Fitzgerald knocks on. Referee calls them back. 
Well, he nearly got away then, did Michael Bradley. The, uh, the new scrum half of this season who came in to face Australia for his first cap and has done very well since. Gallion. Neil. To Dean. Good dummies. Couldn't find the supportive car. The ball loose goes to Gallion. He's tackled by Orr. And the whistle's gone as McCall and Lenehan do their own thing. They'll come back. Well, like you said earlier, it is a separate game for second rows, Bill. Well, they're enjoying themselves, aren't they? <laughs> There's Daniel Lenehan from Cork Constitution. A player who's been capped at every level in Ireland. And an outstanding performer. France's 10-metre line. 15 points all. From Gallion to Blanco. Ringland scurries back. Esther threatens. And uh, Brian McCall again requires some attention. Who's stepped up valiantly into the breach with uh, Brian Spillan off in the first half. Yeah, it looks as though it's the same back injury that he got in the last couple of minutes of the first half because. You've got to admire the Irish spirit and determination in the forwards because they played with Philip Matthews as a virtual passenger for all but the first quarter of an hour uh, of the match. And he's sort of put in valiant work there, but uh, unfortunately his contribution uh, hasn't been great simply because it looked as though he probably dislocated his shoulder or uh, done some severe damage to, to his shoulder. But, uh, you know, 10 out of 10 for the Irish pack for getting in amongst the French and certainly giving them a hard old battle. And that's certainly what it's been. Brian McCall of uh, London Irish. Fit to resume the fray. Which still stands at 15 points apiece. And we're about 15 minutes from the final whistles, plus whatever injury time there is to be added on. France drive deep inside the 22. Well set up for Gallion. Lescabura poised for the drop goal. But he's missed. And he's not really been on song this season. The man who taunted everyone last season with his point scoring consistency that saw him net 54 points in all. And with five drop goals in his last internationals, it looked like number six, but. Wasn't far off, was it? It's Rodriguez. Tight wedge. France in possession. It's the uh, rolling mall set up. Back from Rodriguez again to Gallion. The Scabura chips over the head of Fillor. Pardo chases. And the ball just beats him to touch. Laurent Pardo. And there we saw the advantage of the rolling mall because it sucked the whole of the Irish def uh, defence in. They were committed and it enabled Lescobor to come back on the wide blind side because the no defence was there because they'd been sucked in by the rolling mall. And maybe. Uh, no? Was that a signal for uh, a replacement to stand by? Philip Matthews there with that uh, useless left arm. Ireland, a bit of a crisis with the throw-in on their own line. That was Willie Anderson of Dungannon and Ulster. Bradley, Dean, under pressure, not finding touch. Blanco, collared by Crossan, what a tackle. A gutsy little customer, Keith Crossan is. 
man who uh, just made his place in the Irish Triple Crown side of 82. And finally, it looks as though uh, common sense has taken over. And Philip Matthews' gallant effort comes to an end, I think. He's quite rightly been given a standing ovation by the crowd. And he's been replaced by a prop forward, uh, Michael Fitzpatrick there. Mitch, Mick Fitzpatrick, that uh, be interesting to see what position that he takes up. But I think Islander Wise taking Matthews off because if he had conceded a try, then they could well have regretted keeping him on the field for the last hour of the game. Mick Fitzpatrick then winning his 10th cap. His last was against Australia some three seasons ago and uh, now having to slot into whatever duties are required of him penalty to Ireland well, uh... Kiernan puts it into touch well I can't really see much uh alternative for uh, Fitzpatrick than to try and slot into one of the flank forward positions. Joanel and Anderson. Anderson wins it first, but uh, Joanel got a touch and Condon followed through. Yeah, I think if Ireland have got any sense, they'll uh, put Fitzpatrick on the blind side of every scrum. Certainly, from that point of view, then he, he's not as exposed as he had to be on the open side. And it seems that's exactly what they're doing on this near side he is. Number 16 there on Bradley's put in. The scrummage will stay up. So it's 11 minutes plus injury time to go. 15 points each. Dean, Kiernan, the long feed through to McNeil was uh, not too easy for him. And you can see the anger of Jacques Graton there, the new flanker, the man who took over the role of Jean-Pierre Rive, though I sense Rive has been missed. Offside. Such is the anxiety for possession. Jerome Gallion, 29 year old, and now Kiernan. Well, worth bearing in mind then that Ireland have only once beaten France since 1975. That was two years ago here in a tight contest and. Uh, this new restructured Irish team has given yet another good account of itself. Last year in France, the average age of the side was 31 and caps was 31. This time, the average caps per man in the Irish team is just 11. Average age, 27. No ball issuing. Scrummage. And that's just short of the halfway line. Well, you won't see anyone leave before this final whistle. Full house at Lansdowne Road. Apart from the wind, ideal playing conditions. The wind, of course, in France's favour, though it's dropped somewhat in the second half. <laughs> well, Gratton won't endear himself to the crowd as uh, Bradley seeks to put the ball in again. Shot out that time and, uh, well... Really, uh, Bradley did well to find anyone then. Harlan drive in, stalemate once more. Touch judge raises his flag for a bit of uh, chicanery by one party or another. Harlan uh, are penalised. And the Frenchman has yet to get up off the floor. That's... Laurent Rodriguez from Mont de Masson. And here is the spectacle 
about to come of Serge Blanco kicking for goal and a chance to break the stalemate. Well, no surprise this because Blanco has, in his time, kicked some very, very long penalty goals for France in his total of successful penalties of 17 last year. Two penalties in the conversion to add to his try against Ireland. And standing now on a personal tally for France of 99 points. This for the 100, this to give France the lead. It's a huge kick, but it's way off target. And they're still locked together. Seven minutes plus injury time to go, and that's how it stands. Dantran gesticulating to his pack for more effort. Rodriguez, the ball rebounds off Schwanel. Back goes Salah. Philippe Salah of Agen. Did well to get in front of his forwards and set it up. And this is Cordon the little flick pass is Pardo. But there's Kieran covering again. He'll have to play it or concede the five metre scrum. <laughs> and McNeil has gone down injured. Two tries to nil, and uh, again, the threat of Cordonu to create another. It just shows how dangerous he is in the broken play situation there, that uh, there he managed to sort of switch directions very quickly and give Pardo a super pass. And in giving the pass that he also committed Hugo McNeil into the tackle, and unfortunately, McNeil got another knockdown. I think Cordonu is possibly the most exciting midfield back in Europe, that uh, certainly in a broken play situation, the sleight of hand, and the foot movement is uh, something to behold. He's always been one of my favourites. The influence of Marzo is, is, is there, isn't it? The great French centre. Well, we can see uh, just how he set up. Look how he read the ball then. Came so swiftly to the narrow side, flicked the pass through, took the man out. But good defence by Kiernan. But it's Ireland uh, up again and again about six metres out from their own line on France's throw. Rodriguez sets it up. Again, the tight wedge. Holds in the Irish back row, although Carr is standing off. And somehow they've smuggled it away to Bradley. minutes and whatever injury time there is to add on will someone get the decisive score it's 15 all still that's Dospital on the drive member of the French Grand Slam side of 1981 six of them survive to contest today Bradley in trouble from Gallion. Good support. And Ireland surge back. But it's uh, squirted out France's way, but France... Well, may have fringed offside on that far side of the ball there. And Bradley getting a deserving uh, ruffle of the hair. He's done well. And that's Kiernan safe again. There's Mick Fitzpatrick. With a new experience and a good tackle there to uh, turn Dantra, I think, as he tried to come round. Yeah, it's interesting how the French are now using Rodriguez in the line-out because he's being marked 
by Mitch Fitzpatrick there, and it's given them a distinct advantage uh, in this last 20 minutes of the play in the line-out. So not since the 17th minute, 17th minute of the second half has there been a score. Leska Bora curses himself. It's not been his happiest season as yet. Something of that poise and nonchalance has gone. And France at times have put themselves under pressure as then. Ireland clean strike, heel pass. Dean. Blanco. McNeil. Favourite ploy. Up and under. But Lescabora has time to change the option and bring it to the open side. But Crossan is there. He's got to go for it. Well, maybe he hesitated that fraction too long. The support, quite not, not quite with him. Keith Crossan of Instonians at Ulster. Another knock in the cause of his country. Two plus injury time. Galliol throws. Rodriguez palms, but Dantran doesn't contain and Fitzpatrick did well. So has Lenehan. Driving up towards the French 22. Rodriguez lies injured. Back up field. Ireland desperate for possession and winning the scrummage put in. Fitzgerald there, look at him. Well, there's Rodriguez less happily. Uh, it was Fitzgerald gesticulating to his pack for a last effort. Yes, I don't think uh, Les Gabura will have happy memories of his first visit to Dublin that the, the Irish back row lads have got in amongst him and uh, there we saw Mitch Fitzpatrick catch him in possession, the, uh, the replacement. And let's admire the tenacity of this Irish pack because they've got fired up and they've been under a lot of pressure, especially in the scrums, but they've, they've hung it. And just listen to the crowd there, John, and here we go. It's, uh, you know, they've given this Irish crowd a heck of a lot to cheer about this afternoon. Well, and when you think it was a, a whitewash season they suffered last year, the wooden spoon in style, and now they've beaten Scotland. They're holding the championship favourites, France, and can they win it? Bradley under pressure. Dean tries the drop goal. It was never on with the defence up so quickly. But that's Kiernan leading the way. And just offside is Willie Anderson. He tried to pull himself back, but uh, almost fell forward offside. Gallion takes a quick one. Dantra. Oh. Immovable object against an irresistible force. I think we've described that. Dantra against Orr. And Stale make the end result. Yes, there's going to be one or two bravery awards given out to uh, members of both sides there, and I don't know whether Kieran Fitzgerald actually thinks that uh, this is harder than being in the army. <laughs> well, true grit. France's 10-metre line. Gallion's put in. We come into injury time now. Steady enough. Lescabura, the switch to Blanco. Is there a bit of magic to come here? Oh, that's touch. From uh, Estev to Blanco. It's danger. Blanco covering his cross and he did well. From the left wing. So France move to within five metres of Ireland's goal line. We've played a minute and a half of injury time. It's 15 points all. And France have the throw in. To Rodriguez, Vajwanel, and now Dantra, Gallion. Anderson was not offside as he spoiled the feedback. France claim the award. Bradley puts it away, listen to the cheer. And that might have saved the 
Leskobura dropped goal that is always a fearsome threat. The quick throw in by Garraway. Dantran. Again, the tackle that time by Lenehan. But it's back to Gallion nonetheless. Leskobura tries the drop goal. Hardly gets off the ground. McNeil under the post. Get in, Brooks. And I think Ireland now would settle for the draw. I think they'd be quite happy for the draw. That I think Willie Anderson was a little bit lucky to get away with that offside decision there. And uh, I think the French have a just complaint there in uh, looking towards referee Kerry uh, Fitzgerald. The final whistle it is. A draw it remains. The French three quarters to a man shrugged their shoulders in uh, disappointment, disbelief. But Ireland have held them. And that certainly throws the Five Nations Championship wide open still so it's all still to play for a game of at times impassioned almost brutal force in which ireland showed dogged resistance and courage france too hung in there to the end and a draw 15 points all i suppose a fair result it could so readily have gone either way so now ireland waits to meet wales in a fortnight's time and france make their final flourish in Paris, also against Wales in a month. What a championship this has proved to be, but what an Ireland comeback we've seen this season.